Bring in our panel here, Jason Riley, Wall Street Journal columnist. Here he is. Amy Walter, national editor for the Cook Political Report and syndicated columnist, Charles Krathammer. Charles. Well, it's clear that Trump runs a very personal presidency. And he never had the personal relationship with Reince that he has with others. Uh, and it became rather chaotic. That's the president's own style from when he ran his business. But you really can't have that kind of chaos in the White House. I think the really important question now, and I think the appointment of a military man, is precisely what's needed because, A, Trump respects generals, and B, he needs somebody with a sense of chain of command and discipline. And I'm sure that Kelly negotiated a deal in which he really is in charge. Do you know what I think is going to be the ultimate the question that was raised in what you said a little earlier? Does Anthony Scaramucci go through Kelly, or does he go directly to the White House, I, to the president? I think the answer to that question will determine, because it will reflect the authority of Kelly, it will determine the success of Kelly's tenure as chief of staff. You know, just an interesting piece of history here. Uh, when Richard Nixon was in trouble, uh, he and his chief of staff had left, Haldeman. He turned to Alexander Haig, a general uh, with experience, to straighten things out uh, inside the Oval Office. And it's interesting, in a moment of what seems like from the outside, uncertainty and chaos on the inside, uh, that he turns to a general uh, to try to straighten out the Oval Office. Look, the, the situation in the White House that we've seen this last week was unsustainable. It could not continue like this. There needed to be a shakeup. And the, the uh, lack of success of the Obamacare repeal wasn't just the latest on top of all this. So this needed to happen. The question, and I, I think Charles raised this quite correctly in Brit as well, when he said it, it's not so much that the structure is there, does President Trump want to live within this structure? Will he abide by a structure that Kelly can bring to it? I don't have any doubt that that uh, the former, now former DHS secretary could be very good at doing that, where the military precision and the experience could be very important. But you have to have a president that's willing to do those things. The next question is, will, th will we see this moving the agenda forward? What happens next on Obamacare? what happens on taxes, what happens with the debt ceiling. There's a lot of frustration on Capitol Hill. There has been brewing for some time that the president hasn't and the White House hasn't done a good enough job in putting forward a very clear agenda and then fighting for that agenda every single day. Instead, what they saw this week, a very, very big week for a legislative process, was a president who spent as much time tweeting about his attorney general as he did about health care. That is the bigger problem right now, and I don't know the new chief of staff is going to change that. Uh, it, de it definitely will have a different look in, in the Oval Office and in his interactions. Uh, we should point out the Department of Homeland Security wants to make sure that the uh, secretary is still the secretary until Monday. Uh, yeah. And I think it's You're about right. a transition uh, because of such an important job yeah. at Homeland Security. I think that's another question is who's going to be uh, the next DHS secretary. Yeah, obviously that's, that's another question. Uh, I, I think the, um, this is a great move if you thought that the central problem in the Trump White House was Reince Priebus. Um, I'm skeptical. Uh, I think the general is very capable. I don't think he would have taken the job if he didn't think he could do it. And if he wasn't guaranteed the authority um, he reportedly will have in taking the job. Um, he's a very capable person. The question again is will Trump delegate? Uh, Amy's right. The, the status quo is unsustainable. You can't be at war with your attorney general, at war with your chief of staff, and get anything done. I mean, Trump has a divided country, a divided Republican caucus, and a divided White House. You can't get anything done with all these divisions, uh, and you give uh, Democrats all the fodder they need to be obstructionist. So, some change was certainly overdue here, but the question is, um, will Kelly be any more successful in disciplining President Trump than anyone else who, uh, around him? Well, he does have a different perspective when it comes to generals and people in the military, it seems, on the respect level, the president does. It, it's, it also seems at the beginning that, that the thought process was, here is Reince Priebus, a very close friend of the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, someone who played the inside game at the RNC, obviously was crucial to the campaign with much 
money and data and everything else, uh, and that that was the connection, the outsider with the insider's help. Now seeing healthcare go down, perhaps the thought was, you know what, this insider thing isn't working out for us too well. Let's go with the all outsider team. I agree. I think this is a cleansing out of the insiders, although if the reports that Priebus resigned yesterday are true, then it resigned before the McCain strike and before uh, the uh, health care revision went down. As of last night, it looked as if there was a good chance that the health care reform might have gone ahead. They might have gone to conference. Who knows what would have happened? But the timing here is a little odd because if Priebus was essentially out yesterday, it couldn't have been because of the failure of the health care bill. Look, I think that Jason Sometimes is right. Sometimes timelines are adjusted to uh, they, I'm sure give they will someone. Be. People re readjust them all the time. Memories become more sharp and acute under pressure. Uh, Jason is right. The, the, key, the key question is, this really is the president. It's not Priebus. Is the president willing to be disciplined, or at least to have somebody at the front door who brings discipline? Kelly's job is to be the gatekeeper, the doorkeeper, or in the case of this White House, the bouncer. And, it, and we don't know yet whether he'll do it, because it'll depend on what Trump decides. If Trump gives him the authority, I think it could rein him in and could uh, lead to good results. And if he doesn't, it's going to be rights all over again. Oftentimes on this panel we say, you know, politicians sometimes forget that we have video because we play sound bites from the past that are hypocritical. But sometimes it now in this president they forget that we have Twitter that goes back a few years. January 2012, uh, Donald Trump, then businessman, tweeted three chiefs of staff in less than three years of being president. Part of the reason why Barack Obama can't manage to pass his agenda from that real Donald Trump. Um, so, you know, it, it does come back into play. Washington is a different place to manage then, than the campaign. It's a different place to manage than the campaign. Or and than Trump not, Tower. That's what I was just going to say. It is not like running a business. Running a government is not running a business. And that has been very clear. Working with legislators is not like working with other business people. Negotiating is very different when you're working with Congress. The real metric, I think, beyond just can the new White House Chief of Staff keep the president on track is can they get some wins on the board? The one thing that while that tweet reflected what was going on in 2012, the reality was when Barack Obama was president in 2009 and 2010, they did get some big wins on the board, including the uh, health care bill. So that chief of staff left with some, and that was Rahm Emanuel, of course, with some successes under his belt. Of course, they went on to lose in 2010 a historic number of seats and lost the majority. But if the metric is one, can you can you keep the president focused? And then the second is, can you get some wins on the board? Look, for folks up in 2018 who are on the Capitol Hill right now, their biggest fear is that they're going to go into an election with nothing, that they're going to have no legislative accomplishments despite having control of all three branches. Now, and I part of the that. frustration is they feel as if, one, they have their own internal problems, there's balkanization within that conference, that's on them. But there also there's a frustration that there's not a leadership coming from the White House and there's a distraction, the tweets, all of that that's not helping. I get all of that, but in the prism of what we saw in the election, are we in Washington using a different scoreboard? Are the, the Trump supporters in the middle of the country looking at different things? Yes, that I they agree. like the shakeup, yeah. that this isn't Hillary Clinton, that they love Neil Gorsuch on the Supreme Court, yeah. they love the executive orders that take the regulations off, yeah. and even if he doesn't have the traditional wins of legislative wins, that maybe the prism is different that they're looking through you, yes. and judging this president. You're, you're absolutely right, uh, Brett. His base likes his in-your-face attitude, I think, first and foremost. Um, that is what they signed up for, and that is what they are getting. And we have our own metrics 
uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the press that covers the White House about what's successful, what's unsuccessful. We obsess over the polling and so forth. But the, the fact of the matter is, however, that if Trump wants to get some of these big items done, I think he needs to be a little more popular than he is right now. When Ronald Reagan did tax reform in 1986, he was polling around 60 percent, and he needed to be, because that's a big deal that requires working with the other side of the aisle, getting the country on board, and so forth. And, and Trump is, 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 is not there yet, and he doesn't seem to be doing the things that would bring him there. He's he spent a lot of time this week attacking the senators on the health care vote that he will need on a tax reform vote. He's not playing a long game here and he needs to be. Charles. Look, I think the metric that counts in the end on elections is the unemployment rate, the growth in jobs, and the uh, increase in the GDP. Those are the metrics that really count. The people have a sense that the economy is recovering. That is the most important thing, and they don't really care about scoreboards. Now, in the individual House races, yes, I think scoreboards will matter. Did you have a win? Did you pass anything? And what did you do on your promise about Obamacare? But for the president, in terms of his popularity or his ability to get an agenda through, I think it's the general state of the economy, and that as yet is undetermined. It looked reasonably good up until now, if you throw in the stock market. We don't know where it'll be in November 2018, but that, I think, is going to be quite decisive. I'm not downplaying the importance of the Washington no, I, I, measure, but because there are many lawmakers who say, hey, I need something. Yeah. I, I, I need no, something. Listen, I, I, I do think, and, and this is sort of separating the two of these things, I think if you go out and you talk to folks who supported the president and uh, they say, we are... We like the way that he operates, to Jason's point. That's what we voted for. We didn't vote to do things the same way as usual. What we like about him is that he is different and that he's not going to play by the same rules. And so, in that sense, he's being successful. But at the end of the day, um, the, uh, the real question is, is he able to achieve as much as he was able to achieve? For okay.